Well, I'm going to talk about a work in progress, and it's very much in progress. Um, so any thoughts or questions would, of course, be very welcome. So I'm exploring using GIS to map Rahel Levine Varnhagen's correspondence networks. And I'm working with someone who actually knows how to use GIS, uh, which is fantastic. So that's my collaborator, Andrew Garrison. He's an archaeologist and my future brother-in-law. I kind of lucked out. Um, <laughs> So what I'm going to talk about today is what we've done and where we started and some of the questions and problems that we have. So first of all, who was Rahel Levine Varnhagen? Some people might know her, um, many probably don't. So she was uh, born in 1771, lived to 1833. So she's the eldest of five children. This becomes important. Most important is that she was part of a wealthy, progressive Jewish family in Berlin. She went through a lot of name changes, which uh, is challenging, as you might uh, suspect, when trying to deal with authors and authorships. So she was born Levine. Later, the family changed their name to Robert. When she got married in 1814, uh, her husband was Christian, thus she had to convert. So many of her letters are also under the name of uh, Antonia Friederike von Hagen von Inze. She provided, uh, presided over two literary salons in Berlin, which is how she has been passed down to us, usually. She lived most of her life in Berlin, though she also spent time in Breslau, where she had family. Paris, Vienna, Frankfurt, and Karlsruhe with her husband, who was an attaché. So most important and what I'm interested in looking at here is how she created a new practice of writing in which correspondence was a collective intellectual endeavor. So that all sounds great. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is we have to figure out a way to get from Handschrift, so her handwriting, which you can see presents its own kinds of problems of can we even read it? She crosses things out. What was she talking about? Okay, so her husband helped us there and rewrote many things in his hand, which, if you can believe, is actually the easier one to read. Okay, so we have that. And then, okay, now we try to put it into a form, and if you can see, we actually have, um, from an earlier version, uh, we went from number 49 in the collection to 48 was where it was originally. So letters get moved around. And so we have to figure out a way, well, what version are we looking at? Who wrote it? What do we have access to? What was taken out? How do we make it accessible? OK, so that's one of the problems. The problem, of course, with correspondence more generally is how do you even publish letters, right? So Rahel, her collection is about 6,000 manuscript pages. She had over 300 correspondence. And then, of course, we have all of these material concerns around letters. Well, OK, so such as archival access, they were in Berlin until the war, when they were thought lost for like 45 years, and then they were discovered in Poland, which was great, except for it was, you know, in the early 80s, so getting access was a little difficult. Then we have issues of classification, authorship, authenticity, and originality. Sometimes we only have copies of letters. Sometimes we only have the edited versions of letters. Sometimes we're not sure who wrote what. Was it uh, Rahel herself? Was it her husband who added material? And so this, of course, creates all kinds of questions for classification. And of course, the historical vulnerability of the form. So letters get thrown away, letters get lost in the mail, letters fall apart. Sometimes we can't even read the handwriting anymore. So what are we going to do with all of this material? And a lot of attempts have been made in the past 200 years to figure out what to do with this material. So that's where GIS might be an interesting way to try to figure this out. So in helping us to translate this intellectual space into a geographical space. And so what we have actually been able to work on is plotting uh, Rahel's re residences in Berlin. So she lived in five different places in Berlin. This is Berlin today. And you can see we have plotted those five residences on a contemporary map using ArcGIS with very minimal information in our database. So the address, Jägerstrasse uh, 54, and the dates that she lived there, 1771 to 89. So that was the, how she was born in, where she lived most of her life. Um, recently then, we worked with Google Maps to overlay a historical map of Berlin. This one is from 1789, I believe. And you can see then the same five residences plotted. And what's interesting is that if we start with her initial house, where she lived until 1808, and we go down to the very bottom house down there. This is in 1808, she moved out of her parents' house, and this was a huge event in her life. And we can see, well, actually, it takes up a large amount of space in this kind of intellectual world she creates, but actually, geographically, it's quite close. So how do we think about these, this issue of displacement that she brings up? What kind of displacement is it? How does the geography help us understand this in a different way? And also, just then recreating her world in Berlin. She lived in generally the same areas. 
eventually I'm interested in figuring out where did she send letters in Berlin? What was the kind of network that it looked like in Berlin? Who, she, who was she talking to and how was she talking? So some questions we still have to figure out, well, aside from most everything, is so what will our database include? What kind of information can we include? Is it just going to be dates? Is it going to be residences? How are we going to represent what happened at these residences? How are we going to assign unique identifiers to our documents? Because if we're dealing with thousands of pages, what is that going to look like? Are we going to follow uh, what the current archive uses, which is also in Polish, unfortunately, um, which I don't speak? Um, what maps will we use? How will we map then change over time? Because of course she lived in Berlin during uh, French occupation. Uh, and then again after uh, that. So again, how did Berlin change in that time? And how will we analyze our data once we figure out what we're even looking at? So how will we take this information and what might it tell us about how we can look at these letters in different ways? Because of course nobody's going to read 6,000 manuscript pages just to, you know, because. So is there another way we can make this information approachable and interesting for various kinds of questions? So as you can see, I have more questions than answers, but um, it's at least a challenging project to work on. So that is first steps with GIS and Rahel Thanks.